So today we're going to be giving this Squire Jackmaster a little bit of TLC. Stay tuned. <laughs> Yes, good people, welcome back to the Guitar Manifesto channel, hope you're all doing well out there. So today, we're going to be doing some work on this 2002 Squire Jackmaster, she needs a bit of love, needs a bit of attention. I recently bought this, again, Facebook Marketplace, and I scored it for 80 quid. The guy originally had it advertised for 150, it was on my radar, he reduced it to 100, and I thought, right, I'll give him a couple of days. Put a cheeky offer in, offered him 80 quid, he accepted it, I went around the following morning and collected it. So, here we are, a 2002 Squire Jagmaster, crafted in China. These are the 25.5 inch scale. There's been a few incarnations of the Squire Jagmaster over the years. You started off with the Japanese Vista, and moved on to the Chinese Jagmaster with a 25 inch scale neck, and then they went to the Jagmaster 2. But this year, I think it's pretty cool, because I do like the longer neck. Um, it's probably more a, a Jazz Master than it is a Jaguar. It's got high output humbucking pickups. You've got the two point strap tremolo system, volume tone control, three way selector switch. These have an older body. There's some Montego black that was available in a couple of other colours. But she does need a little bit of work. There's a, a wobbly pickup, um, there's a grounding issue. The strings are like ancient. The action is all over the show. So we're going to give her. A little clean up, put some new strings on, take the pick guard off, have a look under the hood, see why these humbuckers floating around. I guess there's no springs in it, and check out what the grounding issue is. So, the next thing we should do is start taking her apart. First job, get rid of the strings, make sure you loosen the strings off before you start cutting them because the shock could damage the truss rod. So, just get rid of that tension. So if you've changed strings on a strap before, you know they can be quite problematic. Now, I've got the first couple out okay. Uh, that one's all right. That one's sticking. So a couple of them are actually sticking. So what I tend to do is get the thickest string, get it in the hole, give it a push, and that normally gets the stuck string out. There you go. Just need a little bit of persuasion. And they're out. Alright, so let's get that pick guard off. Okay, that's the last screw. So let's get a cloth ready. Let's see what's going on under here. Ooh, she's a tight squeeze. So I'm not in a workshop today, just in the main cave, so I'm a bit limited for room. Alright. Okay, so yeah. <laughs> no springs in either of the humbuckers there. Which is a bit odd. Um, wiring looks pretty much standard. So the grounding issue. Hmm, not really sure if I'm honest. Some of the wiring does look a bit dubious. Thin bit of wire running from the ground on the output jack through a couple of the lugs onto the top of the pot, grounds to the freeway selector switch, and then grounds off to the claw on the other side. Hmm. It's just weird why it's got no springs in there. Must have nicked them for another another guitar project. But all the wiring seems pretty much stuck. Uh, don't look like it's been messed with. What one might do is go around and just 
heat up some of these solder joints just to make sure they're all done correctly. There might be a, a dry joint somewhere. Um, and then I'll hopefully got some springs knocking around that I can stick in them pickups, but nothing really sticks out if I'm honest. I could clean up the inside of that output socket, but that actually looks alright in there, it's quite shiny. Alright. Strange one. But yeah, I'm gonna see if I can find some springs, get them in, go around and attend to some of them solder joints. Uh the claw the other side. Yeah, the claw the other side seems alright, that's well soldered in. Yeah, let's get on with that. So I've just been going through sort of all the solder joints, just making sure everything's soldered in right. Sometimes it's worth just heating some of these joints up just to make sure you get the the solder flowing. You know, it made stuff a a weak joint, it's dried out, or it's, it was like that from factory, you know, never really made a good seal, but yeah, pretty much done everything on it. Seems all the joints seem okay. I'll also resolder the the ground on the claw on the back. Um, found some springs. The stash is getting pretty low, if I'm honest. So I've got two springs there and a longer one, so I can cut that in half. Then we'll have four springs to do both pickups. Just seems strange why they uh, took the springs out, but who knows? It all seems. Pretty original, if I'm honest. Although these pickups look one's all the way around. Yeah, who knows? All right, let's get this flipped over. Ideally, you want the pickups with the little screw marks on the outside. So I think that one is the wrong way round. But we'll rectify that. Ugh, let's have fun trying to get these in now. I don't like installing pickups. All right, that's one done. This one I'm gonna cut in half. About there. <sighs> DIY. And I've done one miles longer than the other. Here. <laughs> Alright, next pick up. And this one is the one that needs flipping round. Alright, so let's get this pick guard back on and sort out that solder joint on the back. I've got this guitar, obviously, Facebook Marketplace. Got it in Deerham, which is about a 45 minute drive from here. Went round there, the bloke sort of briefly told me that he's hardtailed the, the bridge on it, basically he's put five springs on the back and screwed it into the body, so that's pretty cool with me, but in terms of history of the guitar, didn't really say a lot if I'm honest, so don't know how long he's had it, don't know, just don't know. <laughs> I had a quick play of it, quick look around, obviously needs some work, neck seems straight, so I think for 80 quid it was definitely worth travelling for, but yeah, he's put five springs in, Screw these a bit further in, I reckon. Just puts a bit of tension on that tremolo to lock it into place, sort of hardtails it. Just, it's the way I like doing them. Um, just keeps them in tune a bit better. I don't really use uh, floating tremolos on these, if I'm honest. But yeah, it's uh, actually in pretty decent nick as a Got the little marks, little chip there. It's in Montego black, which is the got the metallic finish. But she does look pretty darn cool. Right, let's get some heat on that again. It looks alright, but just in case, that's definitely the original solder joint, and the actual tremolo bridge is quite chunky. Right, that seems okay. What I'll do while I'm here is give it a quick 
clean on the back. So it's got a few little scratches. Nothing worth worrying about. A bit of polish could get them out if I was really bothered. <coughs> For what 21 years old, she ain't doing too bad. Cool, what it'd be like to be 21 again. So, there's the original cover. Let's get that on. And I've got the screws. Sweet. It's even got these funky little strap locks, little star ones. Thought, uh, pretty cool. Let's clean the front of that. It's like using furniture polish. So these have the two point tremolo system. This is the, the standard range, which Squire don't do anymore. It's like the, the next line up from sort of affinity before vintage modified and classic vibe. But yeah, all the body, rosewood fingerboard, maple neck. and shiny. So this Montego finish in the room it actually looks a little bit more like a really dark grey as opposed to black with that metallic finish. Right so let's uh, start cleaning up this neck. Oh and it also come with that gig bag which was a nice little bonus. So before we start the neck just going to put a bit of tape over the Pickups just to stop any metal filings sticking to them. So I'm going to keep it quite simple on this one, just going to give it a quick clean down. Um, for the frets, they are pretty decent actually, there's virtually no wear on them, they're just, uh, they've got a bit of staining and what have you on them. So I'm going to go with a light sanding block just to take. A little bit of that schmuck off, just be careful you don't scratch the fingerboard and sort of glide over the frets. A little bit of wear on that first fret there. It looks like never been a lot of lead guitar work done on this guitar. To be fair, it hasn't been used a lot. This is probably the equivalent to about a 800 grit, so it's pretty fine. And what I also like to do is put the sanding block at like a 45 degree angle, just smooth off the end of them frets, and it sort of rounds off the fingerboard a bit. When you start Sending down, you'll feel it biting a bit, but it will soon smooth up as uh, it smooths off them frets. But these are actually pretty smooth anyway, if I'm honest. Yeah. Don't really need it, if I'm honest. Yeah, 
a little bit there. Yeah. That's done already. Oh. Lovely and smooth. And I'll do that. There's a little ding in the fingerboard there. Um, like an indent. I could sort that out. But it doesn't really bother me. But if something like that you want to get rid of, the best thing to do is get like a, a damp towel, hold it down there, get a hot iron, hold it on the towel, and it pushes the moisture into the wood, into the fibres, and it lifts that little dent out. And that would be easy to get rid of. But again, not really bothered. It's hardly noticeable. It's not going to cause a problem. But if it does, easy fix. I'm going to give the fingerboard a quick clean down with a baby wipe, get the fragrance free ones, don't worry about the wood and the water, it'll put a bit of moisture into your fingerboard anyway, into the rosewood, look at that, just gets rid of that grime. Yeah. It was a little bit dry anyway. Don't be afraid with wood and water, obviously you don't want to go mad, but it's always good to add a bit of moisture into the fibres of the wood. Stop some drying out and cracking and whatever. Obviously don't let this soak in too long. I'll clean the headstock as well. To be honest, that fingerboard looks great. This hasn't been used a lot. I've had some of these Jag Masters that have uh, took a lot of abuse. This one has definitely not been used much. In fact, I'm just going to put a bit of furniture polish on. I went with the lemon oil today, so it's in good nick, that should do the job. Oh, look at that, shiny. Oh, yeah. Good as newish. Yep. Get that off. So next job. Let's get some strings on. So today's string of choice are these Fender 9 to 42 Super 250s with a nickel plated steel ball end. 25.5 inch scale. I do like um, this pack of three. I do like nines on a 25 inch scale, that's my preference. And I believe the gold, yeah these are colour coded so the gold is the lowy. So we've got a feeder through the back. modern style tuners, hand over the fingerboard, about that much, slack in it, oh, sort the tuner out, and then the tuner holes I want that way, so we go 
straight through. Pull the slack out of it. So on about that much. And then we twist it round, pull it tight under the string, pull it tight again, and then lock it over. That's the way I like to do these style strings. Many other ways to do them. Everybody has their own way, but this works for me, has done for 20 plus years, and I've never had a problem with tuning. Oh, another thing I need to do actually. What I remember is tighten these 10 mil screws up. Because these are always loose, you can guarantee it. See, that one's finger tight. Don't need to go mad, just give them a little snug up because these can have an effect with the tuning stability. Yeah, some of them were really loose. Sweet. Right, let's going to do the rest of the strings and then we'll start setting it up. Alright, so the strings are on. She definitely needs a bit of action work, but one thing I do always emphasise when you put these strings on is make sure you fully stretch them. Tune the guitar up. Stretch the string. Get it in tune. Stretch it. Don't worry about snipping the strings. Obviously don't go too mad, but Give them a good stretch, I use one thumb holding it down, another thumb pulling it and keep doing that until that string stays in tune and then once you sort that out move on to the next because people don't stretch the strings and wonder why the guitars don't hold tune properly so I can tune that up now Hold on. I'm using my phone as a tuner so this ain't the best and I can stretch that and it's dropped down half a step. So just keep going over them until it's holding tune. Alright, so now we've done them, I'm going to snip off the strings with the oh, snippy snips. Careful not to cut the rest of the strings. Straight away, the action is all over the show. So, first thing I'm going to do is get my trusty key bolt, put it on the first fret. I like to do it sort of on the fret so the strings are open. And then, where the neck meets the body, so in this case, that fret, you want to measure around the eighth fret. And this is to set up the truss rod adjustment and I want about 0.3 millimeters at the minute it is virtually touching so we need to put a bit more of a, a bow in the neck so we do that with a trusty allen wrench so we're going to go Probably about half a turn, you might need to slacken some of these strings off just to get the wrench in there because I've only got these little ones. So it does need quite a bit, you know. It's probably about a turn and a half. So this has probably never been set up properly or somebody's tried to have a go at it and not done it right. Personally, I like to do it by feel. I've done so many of these now, I can sort of do it by feel and that feels pretty good so the next thing we're going to do is adjust the the string height the action so the top three strings I want 1.75 millimeters on the 12th fret the bottom three I want 1.25 millimeters on the 
12 fret so just make sure when you're adjusting these saddles you know you adjust both screws accordingly so you're keeping that saddle flat so I'm going to go for all of them and then we'll go on to intonation so when you're doing the action you don't need the capo the key bolt so these ain't too far off actually Measurements I give are sort of a guide. Generally what I do is I use them as a basis. Some guitars are different to others, so you know you may need to have strings a little higher or lower. Um, some guitars you can go really low. This one, probably gonna have to have it a little bit higher, just the way it is. Sometimes it works out like that. So next thing is intonation. So to adjust your intonation, if you've opened strings in tune and this one's a little bit too sharp or flat, You've got a screw on the end of your saddle there and you turn it sort of inwards or outwards, whether it's flat or sharp. And then keep adjusting them, tuning them up until you get the open chord and the octave tuned together. And then work your way through all the other strings. So basically, do it in that order. Set your neck relief, set your string height, set your intonation. Intonation, if you're trying to set up on a guitar with old strings, you'll have a fun day, I'll tell you. <laughs> It's best to do it with brand new strings, else it ain't going to work very well. The last thing we need to do to set this up is the pickup height. I'll start with the bridge pickup. What I like to do is have these raised pretty close to the strings, just enough before they start magnetising the strings, and when you strum it, you can see them sort of getting pulled by the magnets. These are high output hot pickups, so I will go a little bit lower with this tend to have the pickup on the the high E side a little bit higher than the low E side. Once I've sort of set that where I want it, um, you can go on to the neck pickup. So when you strum the strings on the bridge pickup, flick it over to the neck pickup, and I sort of do it by sound levels. So you don't want the neck pickup louder or quieter than the neck pickup if that makes sense so it's sort of a, a trial and error thing I don't go by set measurements I just generally just go by a sort of feel and a sound if you know what I mean so I'm just gonna adjust these accordingly the bridge pickup is pretty much where I want it to be the neck pickup is a little bit louder so I will drop that down a bit so just sort that out quickly so I can hear that neck pickup is a bit louder so we'll drop that down it's basically a case of just balancing out the, the sound a bit. Yeah, that's pretty good actually. We should be good there, so I think we're pretty much done. Uh, I've plugged, obviously plugged it in. The grounding issue seems to have gone away, so not sure what it was, but we fixed that, but so it's always worth if you've got a grounding issue, just to check all your solder joints, get a soldering iron and just make sure they're all done properly. So yeah, I think we're pretty much good to go. Next thing, plug her in and uh, give her a little test run.